It's go time. Welcome, everyone, to Quick Kicks here on Third Down Gamble. I'm Don Charbon along with Pat Mooney. Pat, lots going on in the CFL this week, but some of it we'll get to after the break when Luke Mullinder joins the show. We'll have a chance to talk to him. Now, that was recorded prior to this, so to be fair, Luke is unaware. Uh, Nathan Rourke, of course, going on waivers, gets picked up by the Giants. Then we have other issues that came up, but the main one that you and I need to talk about is the CFL has made their pronouncement on Chad Kelly. That's right. The CFL has suspended the Argonauts quarterback Chad Kelly for nine regular season games as well as the preseason games. He has violated the league's gender-based violence policy and he's ineligible and he's ineligible for playing in those 11 games in total. And that's a minimum. It is. So far. It's all dependent now on what goes on with his progress in this process. As the commissioner said in his statement, players are the ambassadors of our great game. They're expected to be leaders in the locker room and role models in the community. It was important that we performed our due diligence to properly review this matter from all points of view. Clearly from their investigation that they had come up with an independent person who had investigated this thoroughly and decided that yes, something needed to be done. This is the pronouncement as we get it today. This all started back on February 21st when a lawsuit was filed against the Argos and against Chad Kelly. The league got involved on February 28th, and a lot of people were clamoring, saying, why is it taking so long? Well, investigations take time. You do not want to rush, because if you get it wrong, there's repercussions. You've got to get it right. Absolutely, and I think in this case, they've done their due diligence. They've found him unequivocally violating this gender-based violence policy. And given that, I think the CFL has done the right thing in putting down strong terms against Chad Kelly or any player who would violate that policy. It doesn't matter if he is the league's reigning MOP or if he's a backup player. There needs to be some form of redress and to make sure that he has a clear path to return if he's able to do so. The issue with Chad Kelly is he hasn't always been able to do so given his past history. Here, though, there are markers that he has to hit. He has to go through counseling sessions and the assessments must be satisfactory before the CFL will consider his reinstatement. So in other words, he's got a lot of work to do. This is a formative judgment. Formative as opposed to punitive. There is a punitive element in this. That's the 11 games, the loss of salary, all that sort of stuff. Formative stuff is let's learn from this. CFL in my opinion, has made the right move. When we talk about a quarterback on a CFL team, they are the face of the franchise. People know who the quarterback is. And in this case, Chad Kelly, as reigning MOP, is also one of the faces of the CFL. And people have to understand that if you're not going to do what is right in the organization, for the organization, or in the community, there will be repercussions. And the CFL has come out on this issue before Jerome Messam being the most famous case that we're aware. The league is very, very adamant that gender equality, gender fair treatment happens throughout, whether you're a player, a coach, whatever. You have to be treated on the same level, respected. And that's absolutely something that needs to be done. Case By taking such a strong stand, they've said this is not going to happen in our league. I'm glad that they give a player an opportunity to return. I think that's only fair. The bottom line in all of this is that the CFL, as far as I'm concerned, despite the fact that people were jumping up and down and saying they needed a decision yesterday, the CFL took the time, got the right people in place, let them run their investigation without interference, and did it properly, appropriately, and found what they needed to find, and then acted upon it, and then set out a series of conditions. What would you say to that? Like, I I mean, what's the next step? Well, the next step is clearly in Chad Kelly's court. What he has to do now, and it's well spelled out, he has to go through counseling. As I said before, it's a formative process. You have to learn what you did, accept what you did. Counseling is about is facing yourself in the mirror and asking yourself tough questions. How did I get here? How do I improve? 
what do I learn from this that I'll be a better person at the end of the day? Absolutely. And at this point, Chad Kelly is still maintaining his in- innocence as this is not run through the courts as well. In any decision handed down by the league that's disciplinary in nature, the player has the right to appeal that decision. And my understanding is that at this point, his agent is looking to appeal the decision, or at least how they may appeal the decision. So that remains to be seen whether or not this strong statement by the league will remain intact, or whether through the appeals process, the CFLPA and the others whose job it is is to protect individuals who have discipline as well, will reduce that suspension. It's entirely possible. That's part of the player conduct agreement is that the CFLPA may get involved. And how that plays out, where that plays out, we have not heard anything formally from Chad Kelly as yet. Whether he wants to pursue this with his agent, with the CFLPA, that waits to be seen. Maybe by the time this episode is available for download, he'll have already made that choice. The question in my mind, and I think what you're asking too, is will there be any change to this? What this does provide the league at this point in time as well is an opportunity to talk to players, to reevaluate what the expectations are for players. We know that players have been held to a high standard in the past, and I think that needs to continue to be done. The CFLPA also has a role in ensuring that all players understand that they are ambassadors to their league, their town, their families as well, and that they've got to make sure they're doing what they can to be positive role models for future players and for the fans of the league. And the other thing, too, is you have to send a strong message. The NFL did it with Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson was hit hard by the NFL for what happened. The CFL, I believe, is taking the right course. You have to make a statement. You have to say something about this. If you really believe in your cause, you have to make it clear. And this will send a shudder throughout the entire league as to what's possible. Whether this stays as is, your guess is as good as mine. The appeals process is there to determine that. Chad Kelly has a clear and delineated series of steps that he's going to have to do should he want to, and second, be able to return to the CFL playing as a player, and again, turning that other side of being a player, becoming a positive role model, and and move forward as an individual, as a player, as a positive role model. Training camps open on the weekend. If Chad Kelly wants to appeal, I don't think he'll be in camp on day one. I just, if I was a betting person, I don't know that I would see this appeal win too much out of this. The CFL, they actually sent somebody to investigate and they put all their facts together before coming to this decision. So it's going to be very tough, I think, on appeal, unless there was something missed. You could probably limit the number of games, but I don't think the counseling is going to be ever lost in this. That's going to be a huge part and parcel of what goes on with his participation in the CFL. He's probably on his last chance here in professional football. Where this leaves the Argos at this point is in a bit of a tough situation with Chad Kelly out. The two quarterbacks of Notre, Cameron Dukes and Brian Scott, at this point don't have a lot of time in the CFL. And so the Argonauts, without Chad Kelly, at least for the next 11 games at a minimum, could impact this organization. Not could, will impact. The Argonauts, though, if you remember, Chad Kelly hardly had any playing time before he went into that Grey Cup game and then led the team to a 16-2 and record. Cameron Dukes has played. He's won football games for the club. He's probably the starter now. But you're right, with that cloud hanging over as to what is going to happen next, the Argos are in a bit of a tough spot to get their season started and they've got to make some tough decisions at training camp. How do we proceed? It's a very difficult situation for Ryan Dinwiddie as well, but that's part of being a coach. You've got to come up with tough decisions when they they face you. It is and there's always players who get injured in the offseason or who choose for whatever reason to leave the team. In this case though, just having signed an extension and becoming the the top paid quarterback in the league, it, it definitely puts a bit of a a hit into their plan moving forward. Dathan Rourke, when he left the BC Lions, everybody thought that they would drop like a stone. And yet 
they found Vernon Adams Jr. and made it back to the West Final. You can't overcome. You just have to be diligent and believe in the people that you do have on the roster. As I said with Nathan Rourke before, BC took that massive hit and yet still wound up facing Winnipeg in another West Final. That's right. Uh, One of those two quarterbacks could be a quarterback who steps up, much like Chad Kelly, much like Ricky Ray, to come into the organization, be able to become a future star. We may see some developmental issues with quarterbacks as they learn, but if he can make that growth quickly, the Argonauts could still be in a good situation in the East. Don't write off the Argonauts in terms of a trade possibility, too. If they're really concerned, there are a couple of veteran quarterbacks that they may make a move for. Let's face it, they're in the same division as the Alouettes. Coming up right after the bumper, I've got Luke Mullinder, the color commentator of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I'm Derek Taylor, the voice of the Bombers on 680 CJOB, and I listen to the Third Down Gamble podcast. With me now is Luke Mullinder, the color analyst with Harvard Media and the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Of course, you're there game day in the booth. Let's talk right away. Stories coming out of the CFL this week, some amazing things. Milt Stiegel is looking to make a return? Yeah. Well, listen, man, if, if there's anybody that can that can make a comeback after being out of the game for however long, I think it's it's got to be at least 12 years. It would be Uncle Milt. I'm just hoping to... Everybody will be hoping there's no Achilles accident or, or something out there when he goes. But, uh, hey, if he's going to do it, he needs all the advantage he can get. So rookie camp's a good uh, a, a good little test for him, right? You get the guys who, who don't know much about the game yet, probably haven't seen a waggle in their life. You might be able to win a one-on-one against a 24-year-old in that regard. That's true. Well, at 54, he would be the oldest player in CFL history if he makes the roster. Listen, if, if, if he makes the roster, Winnipeg's in trouble. All right. <laughs> if he makes it to next, if he makes it to the main camp, when it takes him trouble, <laughs> there's got to be some motivation behind all of this because the bombers wouldn't just be taking this on a flyer. There's got to be some belief. But you know what, though, honestly, what great marketing! I mean, you're taking a legend of the game, right? He's always in shape. He's always looking good. You know, run him out there with the rookies when there's not a ton of focus on the camp, right? Like, I think it's really cool, man. I, I I'm. Uh, I'm not only impressed, I'm a little bit jealous. You know, I, I always tell people that for, for anybody, all those, those alumni who always say, oh, well, I got, I got one play left in me. I always, they're lying. Don't believe me. Nobody's got a play left in them. Milt does, obviously. So it's going to be good to see. Well, he does off-season training with a lot of players and he does have his fitness camp down in Atlanta that he runs. It wouldn't surprise me that he's in tremendous shape, but I just wonder about the body and how much the beating it could take at that age. Listen. One of the other things you'll always hear, especially when it comes to football, is father time is undefeated, right? You, you can go as long as a, a ton of rounds with them, but father time is undefeated. So, again, I think it's great for the CFL, right? And as long as he, and he comes out of it healthy, everybody wins. Well, and it could be part of a TSN story, too, about camp. Totally. And we don't know how that's going to play, too. Well, let's, let's, get, let's get Davis Sanchez out there, right? Let's do some one-on-ones if we're really... Hey, I'm sure if I talk to Suits, we can convince him to take a couple of reps. You know, Suits always looks good, too. Let's see, who else they got on that panel? Who's got some football experience? Yeah, there's no offensive lineman, right? There's no offensive lineman. I don't think there's no lineman in there. No D lineman. Yeah, see, you're limited, right? So it's only receivers and DBs right now. Well, maybe Kate Burness has got a chance to play. Kate Burness... Yeah, she's she's an athlete. I wouldn't put it past her to have the ability to 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 get down there and match coverage. Yeah, I totally agree. She yeah. she could probably uh, match up with Milt, and what a great piece that would be. Yeah, but man, if she jammed him up, though, it'd be never ending. Just never ending. <laughs> Everybody would be be talking junk. That'd be great. The other big story that's come out, and this is south of the border. Nathan Rourke has been released by the New England Patriots. Obviously, he wants to do the tour and see if someone picks him up in the NFL. Yeah. But if that fails, what do you think is is going to be a feeding frenzy to see if he will sign with one of the nine up here? I I would think that there's probably a couple teams shooting on a message and saying, hey, we've got this in the budget for you if you want to come up this year. 
if you're Nathan Rourke, you've got to exhaust all opportunities you have out there, right? Um, I always talk about on our broadcast the, the window of opportunity in the Canadian Football League. It's a small one, right? And those windows, the average career is, I think, 10 point, I mean, 2.3 seasons, right? And uh, in the NFL, it's, it's, it's also very, very slim and short. And so for Nathan, he's really got to, got to make sure that he's exhausted all his opportunities to come before he comes back to the CFL. And then hopefully in the CFL, he's able to pick up right where he left off. I think that he was having a fantastic year in BC. And the nice thing is, is that the impression that he obviously left is going to be one that a lot of teams are going to be interested in. I, I mentioned about the feeding frenzy, but if there are teams interested, would it be the BC Lions because he played there and Lamar Daman is not afraid to do something bold? Yeah. Or is it maybe even Saskatchewan or? Yeah, I think the answer is every team would have some sort of interest in him. I think the teams that would probably really want to take, a, obviously BC is because that's where, that's where he got his start in the Canadian Football League. Let's see, Hamilton for sure, right? But again, I think that the <laughs> What he put on film when he was here, I think every team would, would be mildly interested in looking at what it would take. You have to. You'd have to look at that, right? Because that's potentially a, a, that's a Canadian quarterback. Like, we put premier market caps on guys that are Canadian, but a quarterback, that'd be all. I mean, look at the attention Trey Ford got, right? Trey Ford was a Canadian quarterback making all those plays last year. And to be honest, those aren't plays that we haven't seen out of American quarterbacks. It was exceptional because he was Canadian, right? So I think Nathan Rourke is going to have a market here. I think there'll be a few teams that are definitely interested in his services and players in terms of like faces of the franchise. We need quarterbacks, starting quality quarterbacks in this league to market, to talk about, to sell jerseys. And Nathan Rourke would be one of those guys right away when he comes in. Because if you look across the board, what premier name at the quarterback position is there other than Zach Caleros, right? I mean, I'm sure all of the team's number one's quarterbacks, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Chad Kelly. But again, this is a team that's lacking big names right now. Or a league, excuse me. I would agree with that. Although Cody Fajardo may have up in terms of oh. being noticed with that Grey Cup victory over Winnipeg, he looks stellar in that game. You know what? They really did a good job playing to Cody's strengths in that year overall, but specifically in that game, especially that fourth quarter. That last fourth quarter, they they limited his his need to to stay in the pocket and read. He said, hey, if there's not a couple guys open, just take off. You saw him use his legs. And the, the final touchdown throw, that was one of his wheelhouse throws, right? Wasn't a deep, deep ball that needed some touch. It was, it was a bullet right down the middle to an open receiver. I, I think that Cody had a great year last year. And more importantly, the coaching that Cody got, especially probably specifically from Jason Moss, was exceptional. The results... They stood for themselves. It's it's great to see a championship team back in Montreal, and they're going to be a menace to to deal with this year because it, one would look at their transactions that they made in the off season, and you could probably say they got better, right? They they had a really good draft, but they they signed some really key pieces in the off season. Who's to say? I, I think they're going to be a tough team to deal with this year. I can't argue that at all. The Alouettes are on, what, an eight-game winning streak overall? The, until someone beats them, they're the best, as far as I'm concerned. And here's the other thing. If you want to win a championship in the Canadian Football League, you've got to have two starting quality quarterbacks on your roster, right? So why wouldn't you want a Nathan Rourke? Especially if you're in Calgary, right? Like, I think that Calgary would, would be jumping all over a, uh, an opportunity to bring him in. Because I, I would see him supplanting Jake Mayer. Uh, you're right. That's the only way I could see it happening because John Huffnagel typically not a guy to throw big money unless he's got a quarterback in the stable like Bo Levi Mitchell was for those years. And he said, okay, you're worth it to me. I don't see him going free agent style that way. Yeah, but is it, uh, that's the thing, right? Is it Huffnagel? You've got a new president there now, Jay McNeil, and you've got the, the general manager who, who Huffnagel sort of bred in, in, uh, in Dave Dickinson. So who knows that 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 philosophy might have changed there in Calgary, right? So, I think it'd be interesting to see just sort of 
today especially what type of text he was getting from the Canadian Football League. But I, I hope that and, and I'm okay with not seeing, but I hope he catches on in an NFL team. The NFL, unless you're an elite guy, like one of their franchise guys, you've got just as good uh, of making the game day roster than any guys up in the CFL. It's just a lot of the guys have really good representation, right? Um, a lot of the times, especially in the depth, it's who your agent knows that gets you on a team. I'd like to see him exhaust those opportunities. You, you don't want to ever regret something like that. At the end of the day, when Nathan Rourke's a, an old grandfather, he's got a ton of grandkids, he's going to want to have peace of mind that he gave it everything he could in the NFL, and then he came to the CFL with a clear mind and an open heart to, to winning a great cup championship and not needing to get to feel that pull to the NFL. You made a great point, though, about it's not necessarily skill set, but it's who you know in the NFL because they are very wedded to what kind of contact have I had with you before, your agent, whatever. Oh. Uh, Adam Bighill chronicled that very well when he came back from New Orleans. Yeah, totally. It's who you know. There, you hear it in guys like, in Chad Ojo Cinco, he's, he's got such a huge platform. The things he said are always brought to light, but even he said, right, like you come up to Canada, man, and especially the skill position guys, they're so good. It's just there's, there's only so many wide receiver jobs in the NFL. So you look at the 32 teams in the NFL that all have four or five main wide outs, right? Two of them are their go-to guys, and then there's a three or four that are just guys to be part of the team, right? Multiply that by 32. That's, that's not a big number when you look at the amount of people that want to play wide receiver at the professional level. So then you come up to the Canadian Football League, and you see that there are X amount of spots on teams to be a receiver, but there's only nine teams, right? I, I tell people all the time, the supply will always outweigh the demand when it comes to the, the player part of this. And that's why it's never, that's why negotiations don't always go in the players, uh, in the players favor. Right. That's why when you'll see teams like Calgary did the other day, release guys right before the start of training camp, even though they knew that those guys are going to have a really tough time getting into training camp after, because the, you know, a lot of the full, right. But it's because the supply is always there. And, and it always outweighs the demand when it comes to players. It doesn't, the supply does not outweigh the demand when it comes to coaches and executives. Yeah, that's very true. The other thing that, well, Quantes Stiggers makes the draft in the NFL and he gets drafted rather high. Mm -hmm. And it's always been impressed upon me is that if you're a corner in this league up here, the area that you have to cover is so much more than what you have to cover in the States. If you can make it here, you should be able to make it there. Yeah, totally. And the other thing about this is, I mean, Imagine you're an NFL DB. It's hard enough already to guard Justin Jefferson, right? Like, like he's elite. Justin Jefferson is one of the elite guys. Can you imagine Justin Jefferson having a 10-yard head start at the line of scrimmage <laughs> when he's running a go route, right? right? You know what I mean? Devontae Adams getting a 10-yard he uh, head start full speed at the line of scrimmage by the time his ball snapped and he's only running like a five-yard dig. Like, it would kill DBs. Yeah, it, you've got to be exceptional out here. And again, I think that as of late, you've seen some success, specifically from Winnipeg. I think Winnipeg's been doing great jo a great job scouting defensive backs because it seems like every single offseason they're putting another defensive back in the in the league. Quantez Stiggers is a great, great example of what it truly takes. Like John Murphy and, and Pinball Clemens, say what you want about whatever situation is going on in Toronto, but those guys have an eye for talent and they understand that you're going to find it anywhere. Like Quantez Stiggers wasn't even on a board and they gave him an opportunity and look where it got him. Right. So again, that supply chain, man, it's going to, it's always going to be there if you're willing to look. Talk to me about the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in particular. There's a new head coach here. It's the first Canadian coach they've had with the team since Bob Dice took over as an interim coach a few years ago yeah. in this off season, what, mm -hmm. if anything, have you seen? So I'm, I'm big on coaching. One of my favorite quotes from one of my favorite coaches, Nick Saban, Nick Saban talks about buying in and he, and he talks about, you know, mediocre athletes and people, they don't like high achieving athletes and individuals, right? And, and the high achieving athletes and in, individuals, they, they actually don't care too much for the mediocre athletes and achievers either. Um, in order to have team success, you've got to get both of those groups to buy into a certain purpose or a certain principle. Corey Mace is a guy that everybody's going to buy into. That's the deal. Corey Mace is a guy 
that everybody is going to buy into. He's going to be a guy that the today's generation of athlete understands and also can see eye to eye with. More importantly, he's going to be, he feels like he's going to be a guy that's going to hold people accountable. And I think that one of the things, if you, if you look at the last couple seasons with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, I don't think there was a ton of accountability when it came to just the results or the day to day. And that's not a good thing. That's not a bad thing. It's whatever it is, what it is. Who cares? Right. It's not, it's in the past now. And everybody that, that, that was, every team looks different every single year. Anyways, I, I think that Corey Mace is a, is a great hire. I'm really excited to see how he's able to gel this team, because I think that that's one of the things that he's going to be able to do that maybe coach Dickinson, who was here before him, didn't necessarily do a great job is, is having everybody on the same page and having everybody buying into one specific belief. And it's not going to be that they're buying into Coach Mace himself as, per, as a person. It's going to be they're buying into the things that he believes. So I'm excited. I think that uh, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, when you look at the Western Division, I think that uh, they've got a good good opportunity to to fight for absolutely for a playoff spot. I can see them going as high as number two. They're going to have to do a heck of a job if they want to com- compete with BC and Winnipeg. But I think this year they can. I think that they, they have some talent there. It's just think that they, they need some coaches to get them to the next level. And I think that that's why Coach Mace is here, because I think that they believe that Coach Mace can get them into this level. And look, I'll tell you what, man, I mean, I talked to a lot of people in that organization and, and the, he's changed. He's helped change the culture around in the organization already. And the players aren't even in the building yet. It's just it's just changed within the staff and the people on football ops and business ops, right? And uh, he's done a great job in and around Regina and the rest of the province too, showing up, showing up at events, you know, saying hello to people, speaking on some of the things that he believes in. So I think they're they're a really good fit. But you know what? As you say every off season, right? You don't win championships on paper. So it's got to come together. And I'm excited to 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 get this journey going. Rookie camp starts on the eighth. Buy-ins. You talked about how players have to buy in, but what about the coach too? Like the way that Corey Mason, you've elocuted it, the way Corey Mason's come in and just by his presence, just by his attitude, things are starting to change. When you expect things to happen, right? You don't just, it's not just something that you're like, you know, you're being cocky about it. There's a process, right? And I'm anxious to see where the process is with with Coach Mace and the rest of his staff. You know, the other thing about it too is, is he's got a good mix of staff. This isn't a shot at Devon Claybrooks, but when Devon Claybrooks came in as, as head coach for the first time in BC, it, he just hired a bunch of his friends. Like a bunch of, you can't do that. You need a good, good mix of of guys that you get along with, obviously, but you you need a great mix of guys who can relate to the locker room, but also can can coach at a high level themselves. I was concerned about that when Coach Mace was announced because the very next question was, well, who is he, who's he going to bring in? And I think that the, the coaching staff that he's surrounded with is, is a good mix of, of guys who have been there and done that, like, like his defensive staff. Well, it's interesting, too, J.C. Sherrod. This is really his first go-around in the CFL as a coach. Yeah, but you know what, Jay? I mean, he's also, he's also been in coaching since he left the game i think that you know mark mueller is a guy that that a lot of eyes are going to be on right he's he's been in and here's the thing mark mueller comes from comes from the huffnagel era in calgary right so uh, i'd actually lean to more to the positive than the negative but again it is what it is this is his first time taking the reins as an offensive coordinator full-time right one of the guys they kept kent majuri uh their special teams court he's a fantastic coach uh, he's he's probably yeah I think that he's going to be one of the underrated but you know Philip Daniels is in there Joshua Bell Mark Way McDaniel Anthony Vital is a great coach too I, I really liked Vital in the O line role that he had last year so again it's a decent staff and and now they just got to make it come together we talked about Nathan Rourke we talked about quarterbacking the Rough Riders they've got a 38 year old by the time camp breaks yeah. quarterback at the helm and they've got two others under contract, three others under contract that may be vying for that second spot. Where do you think that is going to all play out? I can't wait for the quarterback uh, duel. Obviously, Trevor goes in as the number one, as he should. I thought he was playing really well last year. I thought he had a chance to get them into the playoffs and make some noise if he had stayed healthy, but that just wasn't the case. I think that um, Mason Fine, I thought he did a good job last year. Right. I I mean, here's the thing. Nothing was working last year. It wasn't just the quarterbacks. Right. But I I think that Shea Patterson potentially could be the future of this team. Like he's he's got he's got some game to him. He's he's really athletic. But again, with the football that he's 
played prior, he's played well. And I think that um, that he's really going to push Mason fine. So that quarterback battle for the number two spot is going to be great. And the, and the thing that makes it so great, uh, Ma- uh, Mason fine is used to that. Mason fine is used to, to, to quarterbacks breathing down his neck. Right. I mean, you should have seen those guys go toe to toe last year. And, and it, Shea Patterson was in the mix there. Right. And, and so was Jake Dolgala. Trevor Harris was always the guy, but man, they, they the three of those other quarterbacks, they went at it. That was a that was a bloodbath in terms of training camp. It was awesome to watch, and I think it'll be awesome to watch this year. But I, I'm really expecting big things from Shea Patterson to be to be honest with you. Is there a push to get the running game going given the signings from Winnipeg and Toronto? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you can get a guy like AJ Ouellette, right? It's just uh, I mean that's a that's just a, a big nasty back that that run ha- that runs hard. They've got Frankie Hickson in there as well, who, who's got some experience in the Canadian Football League. He's got a little he's got a little juke to him too, Frankie Hickson. I think that Thomas Bertrand Udon, uh, one of their fullbacks, he's a great blocking fullback. I think that uh, that was one of the more underrated pieces of this team in, over the last couple of years too. They got some really good play from uh, their fullback positions, namely uh, Albert Awachi, who's no longer with the organization. But they got guys like Bertrand O'Donnell who can play. Again, I, I think that um, I think that AJ, though, he, he's going to bring not just what he brings about with him on the field. He's going to bring leadership. He's, he's been a guy that's won a great cup. He knows exactly. He was he was groomed by by a guy like Andrew Harris, right? Like that is that is something in the locker room that goes farther than in, than a lot of things on, that can take you on the football field. And on the offensive line. Yeah, you know what? It was a shame that Philip Blake missed mo- most of last year. But uh, I think that um, they've just got to answer the tackle question. I think that they're set in at, at, in the interior. I love the fact that they've gotten Ryan Skivier from, from Calgary. That was something nobody saw coming. Peter Godber goes into his second year as a center. And you've got Philip Blake, right? And then you've got – and here's the thing. like You say all that, but you, you've still got Logan Furland, who, who's playing really well and has, has started for the last two years and is, and is a local guy that can play. For me, it's, it's, it's Jamarcus Hardrick on one side, and then who's going to – answer the bell in terms of that left left tackle spot that'll be another one of the things that people are watching but again they've got some good guys that they've brought in who played some big time ball right like Sidarius Hutchinson out of South Carolina right like they, they, they've got some guys that, that have played some big time games so we'll see is it possible that another team is going to represent the west in Vancouver at the end of the year yeah, yeah totally yeah totally I think it's totally possible I think that um again you know Winnipeg is has done really well for themselves, right? At some point, every core gets to that age. I've talked to people in Winnipeg that were absolutely shocked that Jamarcus Hardrick left. Like, that wasn't something that anybody saw coming. And I, it's good for Jamarcus Hardrick. He got paid, right? Like, hopefully that's, because that's, that's what you want to do. That's, you only have, a, again, a small window to get, to maximize your value. But Jamarcus Hardrick, another guy who brings winning experience, who knows what winning locker rooms feel like, who knows, you know, how to get. See, that's the thing. You, you've got to, in, in, in a CFL locker room, you've got to get guys that understand what it takes to win and go and get the guys that have no clue and bring them along because the faster those guys who have no clue that are still being relied on to make plays to like, you know, like rookies, um, you know, special teams, guys, guys who aren't as bought in as the core guys, the more, the more of those guys you bring along, the quicker you're going to win. And having guys like Jamarcus Hardrick, having guys like AJ Olette, having Corey Mace, who's won great cups, that is a step in the right direction as far as, Hey, there's a lot of guys who have been there and done that. Now let's go and get it done. Are the Elks going to be with McLeod Bethel Thompson? Are the Elks going to be a challenge this year? I, yeah, I think uh, the Elks are going to be really good. Uh, I'm looking forward to the Elks. I listen. I and these things are so hard to call, and and you're never gonna you're never going to be liked by everybody. But I, I do think that Calgary finishes last in the division this year. I think Edmonton will sneak in. They'll probably definitely cross over. But again, I, I don't know how it's going to play out, but man, I just, I see Saskatchewan potentially making some noise and I see Winnipeg taking a small step back. They took a step back last year. I see BC playing well, but again, they're, you know, BC's got some questions too, right? Like they lost Matthew Betts. Who knows when they're going to get him back, if they're going to get him back, right? Like they got to be able to rush the passer in BC. They're used to just such quality pass rushing over the last couple of years with Betts that it's, it's going to come. They're going probably going to get in there and be like, Hey, who, who's going to fill that void, right? All is not just 
peaches and cream for BC Lions either. So I think that the West is really close. I, I do like I do like the parity that's in the division right now. But I think that out east, I think Montreal, um, if they're left unchecked and and they don't and they don't go through a, a, an injury situation, I think that that's the team to beat in the East. BC, to be fair to them, they've played two West Finals in a row with a quarterback that was playing on one leg. What if? Yeah, totally. Well, listen, Rick Campbell's one of the best coaches in this league. Barnum. It's, it, there's not, it's not even, right? Like, he, he's, he's an elite-level coach. And, and, and you, so you shouldn't be surprised that you're right, that they've been able to just lose one, get the next man up, get him going, right? Like, VA, man. VA was on his last leg in his career, and now he's like... The guy, it's great to see. But can they get over the hump? This is my question. Because when Nathan Rourke played in that West Final, he was coming back from a severe injury. Yep. When Vernon Adams played that West Final, he had a knee injury that was hobbling him. Right. Can they make it through clean? Yeah. And, you know, it's the same thing for, for Winnipeg, right? Like, what do their horses look like, right? They're, they're all another year older. And now they don't have Yoshi in that locker room. How, what does that mean? Stanley Bryant's another year older, right? Like, Patty Newfeld's another year old, year older. Adam Big Hill, I don't even think he's going to be around, right? Willie Jefferson's another year old. Jackson Jeffcoat isn't even there anymore, right? Like, that's a team that's shifted too. So if you're looking at Saskatchewan, and Saskatchewan filled some pieces, and 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 one of the things that was that was a void was coaching. They've got as good a shot as any right now. Jackson Jeffcoat, I don't think, got the due that he deserves for what he did in Winnipeg. Mm. When you look at Willie Jefferson's stats when Jeffcoat's on the field and when he wasn't playing, it's night and day. Yeah, totally. I, you know, and that's the thing. You look at all the best defenses, right? Dwight Freeney, I mean, when Dwight Freeney was in Indi- Indianapolis and he was an actual absolute terror, he always had somebody on the other side, right? It's, uh, you always have uh, complimentary guys that make, like Cam Wake, for instance. Uh, Brent Johnson was there, right? Like solid. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Willie Jefferson, such an outgoing personality and such a great sort of guy to just gravitate towards to, right? Then you got Jackson Jeffcoat, who was just all about his business. I agree. I think there's going to be a drop off there too. Luke, thank you so much for uh, helping us out here. Oh man, listen, I, I appreciate the opportunity. I love talking ball, man. And uh, you just call me, call me throughout the year, man. We'll, we'll, we'll do this again. Oh, that's awesome. And where can people find and follow you on the socials? Oh, <laughs> Gee, that's a good question. Uh, I'm on Twitter, for, I'm on X for sure. And I'm on Instagram. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Luke Paul, yeah, L-U-C-M-U-L-L. But uh, hey, man, I'm always around Talk Ball, man. Have a great day. Awesome, thanks. All right, brother. Thank you for listening to our show. Third Down Gamble is hosted on Podbean and can be found on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify. Follow us on Twitter at Third Down Gamble. Join us again, the Third Down Gamble podcast, Audio worth watching. Third Down Gamble uses the expert resources provided by Canadian Football League Player and Game Statistics for analytics, game notes, and statistics, and 3downnation.com for news, insight, and in depth analysis. Please visit cfl.ca and 3downnation.com for the most up-to-date information on the Canadian Football League.